and it is over. Liverpool 2, Real Madrid 5, Jurgen Klopp and Carlo Ancelotti have a little hug on the sidelines. Uh, respectful there. Obviously, the second leg in a few weeks' time in Madrid. Liverpool got all to do a three-goal uh, deficit to overturn. And Benzema is smiling. Vinicius is smiling. Every Real Madrid fan right now is smiling. And that was uh, a clinic, as we say, right? In the second half in particular, of just how yeah. to surge back and make the most of your opportunities. And it seems like a long time ago, but Liverpool were 2-0 up inside the first 15 minutes of this game. By Liverpool. But they just collapsed, capitulated, crumbled, um, whatever you want to say. So my big question to you, Andy, is as we analyse Liverpool pass it, is this the beginning of the end for Jurgen Klopp? Do we think this kind of signifies the squad issues they've had, the style of play issues with the high pressing not working, and just everything has been ruthlessly exposed by a very, very good Real Madrid team. But as Klopp kind of comes off the pitch here at the end of the game and he's he looks a bit shell-shocked, I think is the best way to put it, it seems like he knows this is becoming um, a really difficult task for him at Liverpool. And again, they're still in the top four hunt in the Premier League, but it looks like their Champions League hopes for this season are pretty much over. Is that fair to say? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, for this season, certainly. I, I don't think it's the beginning of the end. I think I think we're well past the beginning uh, of what the end is going to look like for Liverpool. I'm looking at what they've done this season in the Premier League. Joe, they won two of their first eight games in the Premier League. That is the beginning of an end for a club like Liverpool and a manager like Klopp, given what they have achieved during his tenure. Like, this has been happening all season. This is not anything new. And so this is while nobody may have predicted, you know, five, two with five unanswered goals for Real Madrid, this was always in play. This was, this was not out of left field that this happened to, to, to Liverpool, to this Liverpool team, the way that they've been this season. So yeah, it, it, it feels like, it feels like it might be the end of the end for, for Jurgen Klopp at, at Liverpool. Like it, it feels like, it feels like we're at that point. I just, and I, and I said it earlier in the game, I don't know how they come back from this. I don't know how he picks this team back up from this. I don't know how the players listen to anything that he has to say in the locker room after this game and respond to it because so much of what is a problem for this team is Jurgen Klopp's system, is Jurgen Klopp's tactics, and he does not deviate from that. He does not change, and that's been, uh, you know, that's that that has helped him at points in his managerial career. He has always believed in himself. He has always believed in his team and his system. And that has gotten them through some fairly difficult times, but never anything like this. And certainly it's never been the reason that they have been in a situation like they are now. So uh, it's, I think Liverpool fans will remember him fondly. Obviously they won a premier league under him. They won champions league under him. Uh, but this is uh this is just about the end. Yeah. I think I could see Klopp leaving at the end of the season. I still think Liverpool could finish fourth in the Premier League. I still think they could do that and recover and have enough in them to, to do that. But this is a hammer blow. This 5-2 defeat at home against Real Madrid after you were 2-0 up early, flying, you know, it's all firing all cylinders, right? And then to make that um, great goal from Vinicius, but then to make the mistake to make it 2 all just sucked everything out of Liverpool and... It, again, I mentioned it earlier. It's the stylistic change, I think, of just football. It happens over time. We look at Tic Attacker from Barcelona, how everyone wanted to play that way. And then over time, people teams figured out how to stifle that and then hit teams on the counter. And then we're seeing it the same with Liverpool now. And Jurgen Klopp is the, the godfather, right? And the, the main man for uh, Gagan Press. And everyone wanted to do it over the last few years. But now we're seeing teams getting caught out uh, and they're not working at Leeds United, at Southampton, at other teams in the Premier League um, that have tried to replicate that, and, and even the Red Bull teams as well. Um, so every kind of generation or error, um, tactically it changes and tweaks a little bit. And I think this defeat for me highlights not the players, not Klopp, but just stylistically how football is changing and developing. Um, so that's a bigger picture thing for me, not just Liverpool, put them to one side, but... I'm intrigued to see how, who kind of comes up with the next big style that's implemented and copied around uh, the globe. Because I still don't think there is one right now. I think maybe if you look mm -hmm. at Morocco from the World Cup, the sort of sit back, but then counter with precision, 
uh, keep the ball well when you have it. There's a real combination now in terms of controlling the tempo of games uh, yeah. and just being at ease with the ball as well as pressing in certain situations. It's almost like a, a zonal game impressive, if you know what I mean. Instead yeah. of the whole team going, it's just portions of teams. So anyway, it's, it's a, a big... bit what Arsenal are doing now, right? Exactly, exactly. And Man City do it well. You know, they always talk about uh, yeah. piling on and, and, and pinning teams in as well. And they obviously do it really well. But um, it, it's sad for Liverpool. And I think sad for neutrals, really, watching that demolition job. The capitulation, again, the collapse. Uh, mm. Catastrophic from Liverpool. But as we said, it's been kind of coming. I mean, Brighton, Brentford, Wolves, the way they've lost those games this season... Not too dissimilar. Obviously, Real Madrid have taken it up a level in terms of quality and their clinical finishes. What was it? Nine attempts on goal and they scored five of them. So um, just shows you how good uh, they are and how ruthlessly Liverpool can be exposed. So I think for the second leg, it's just about paying, playing for pride for Liverpool. Um, and now the big question, Andy, is this season. I, I think they can still challenge for the top four. Do you think that's actually possible? Um I don't know. I don't know if they can really recover from a, a beating like this. Yeah, that. Yeah, I don't think so. Honestly, like they've they've not shown anything aside from you know a, a, what a victory over Everton, who uh, at the time in the relegation zone, and a victory over Newcastle, who are are very limited without uh, Bruno Guimaraes and the team, um, and and just haven't scored a ton of goals all season anyway. I've I've seen nothing from them that makes me think that there is a a quick. And because it has to be a quick turnaround. They're at the point of the Premier League season now where there's no more time to waste. There's no more, uh, we'll, you know, we'll figure things out and we'll get it down the road. They need to start winning this weekend and they need to pick up wins um, and, and string them together in succession. And I just, I mean, that was, I can't name a worse performance that I've seen from, from a Premier League team in Europe, maybe ever. I mean, that was just, it was abysmal after going to nil up the way that they just completely... They, they didn't quite give up, but they almost might as well have, have given up in, in that game because it, it, it felt yeah. like, you know, it felt like they had no chance. So I think top four would be a big, big ask. And if they aren't able to do it, then it makes the, the managerial hire. It makes the, the signings and the squad rebuild infinitely more difficult because they don't have Champions League to offer. And they also don't have the money of the Champions League to offer as well. Yeah, the likes of Jude Bellingham and other players they want to get to rebuild their mid midfield around. I mean, it's going to be a lot tougher. They're not in the top four. But next few games, Crystal Palace this weekend, then Liverpool uh, sorry, Liverpool playing at Wolves at home. Then they're at home against Man United. Then they're away at Bournemouth. Then they have the second leg against Real Madrid uh, away, which you know is looking like a damage limitation job. And then they have uh, Fulham at Anfield before the international break at the end of March. So some winnable games there in the Premier League to recover. And then after the international break, they have the small matter, first game back uh, away at Manchester City. So um, Liverpool, there's a lot of challenges ahead. I don't just think for this season, but for the rebuild with or without Jurgen Klopp. And it was a really humbling defeat for them against uh, Real Madrid. And I think midfield in particular is where they need to strengthen. Um, and again, the style of play situation needs to change for me for Liverpool if they're going to get back to, to where they want to be, which is winning trophies. And, you know, last season on the cusp of the quadruple, they weren't a million miles away, but how quickly things change in football. We said it again, a lot of players just going over the hill at the same time. And it's difficult to predict that, as we saw with Manchester United over a decade ago. When that's going to happen, you just do not know. Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch more videos all season long. For even more Premier League content, from original series to live matches, head over to Peacock and be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend on USA Network and on Peacock. We will see you over there.